A pigeon came to bring the invitation. Obviously, not a letter on paper. No, pigeons can't write. It was an oral invitation. The pigeon landed on the ground in front of Susie, the wild boar, and told her the message. Dear Susie, Petra and Peter would like to invite you to their wedding. This afternoon, in the clearing in the woods. Susie smiled. She recalled her adventures with the wild horse Peter and how they had found Petra after a lot of wandering. How long had it been? Six months already? Susie had found friends in the days since. Two other sows. Two other female wild boars and their children. They lived together as a group in a sounder. That is what a group of wild boars are called. A sounder with three females and six young. Susie had no little ones herself, although she would like to have her own children. Anyway, the wedding of Petra and Peter Susie went to her friends and told them she had been invited to a wedding. How wonderful, said her friends. This afternoon? Then we have a lot of work to do. We need to get you ready. Giggling, the ladies went to a quagmire and jumped in. Such a nice feeling, with your belly in the mud, to feel mud and sand between the belly hairs. It's nice and cool. Good against creepy crawlies. And you smell so delicious, having taken a mud bath. After getting dressed, Susie went to the clearing in the woods, to the wedding of the two wild horses, Petra and Peter. Ralph the rabbit was there too, with his wife, and 12 children. That had also been six months since Susie had seen Ralph. The two had quite a lot of catching up to do. There were other animals. Susie saw two badgers, three storks, squirrels, and a wild boar, a male. He looked strong. But behold, Petra and Peter came walking out of the woods, into the clearing. All the animals made space for the couple to be married. They looked absolutely fabulous. Petra had pink roses in her mane, and Peter had a colourful flower garland around his neck. The two walked beside each other and stood quiet, in the middle of the clearing. The guests stood in a circle around. A deer with stately antlers took a few steps forwards towards the couple. Everyone was silent. This was the official part of the wedding. The deer performed the marriage. He said, Petra and Peter, do you promise to always be good to each other? The horses neighed in agreement. The deer concluded. Then you are now married. The lovers kissed each other. The guests cheered, stomped with their feet on the ground, clapped with their beaks, or made noises in other ways. Then there was a party. And my, what a fine party that was. There was plenty of food, chestnuts, worms, grubs, acorns and hazelnuts. Treats for all to eat. And there was music. A beaver and a woodpecker drummed and pecked on a tree trunk. Everyone danced with everyone else. The male swine came to Susie. Hey, what's your name? 
What beautiful eyes you have. The two started talking. Susie felt that Boris, that was his name, would be a good father for her little ones. Such a strong wild boar would be able to provide the protection little children need. Would you like to dance? Susie really felt like dancing. So romantic. But, but Boris danced very wildly. He jumped up and down, up and down, all the time. Susie had to laugh about it. Male boars. How different they were from sows. They rested and ate chestnuts and acorns. Boris looked deep into her eyes. Susie, I like you. Shall we go for a walk tomorrow? Susie blushed and replied that she would like that very much. The party was coming to an end. The animals said goodbye to Petra and Peter and went home to their burrows or nests. Boris took Susie back to her friends. The two gently pressed their snouts together. In the weeks after, Susie and Boris were together very often. They went for walks in the woods, they took mud baths and cuddled. In short, they had a fantastic pairing time. One day, Susie told Boris she was pregnant. There were babies in her belly. Sweetly, Boris hugged Susie. He loved her, and it made him very happy that they would have children together. Of course, Susie also told her friends that she was pregnant. Wonderful, they shouted. Then we will soon have more children in our sounder. Do you need help building your nest? A female wild boar, a sow, makes a special pit to give birth to. The sow lives there in this pit with her children for the first week. Susie searched for a quiet spot among the bushes. There, the three sows made a large pit and covered the inside with grass, ferns and other soft and warm stuff. There were eight, eight baby piglets, eight little squeakers. How sweet they were. They had lovely fluffy ears. They had warm soft noses. But what was especially touching were their stripes. It was as if they were all wearing pyjamas. Susie fed the children and felt so happy. Her friends came to visit. Carefully, they looked through the bushes and whispered, Susie, you have beautiful children. After one week, the baby piglets had grown quite a bit. Susie told her children that they would now live together with their aunts and cousins. That was fun. The baby swine learned about life in the forest. Where to find fruit, chestnuts and worms, and also which herbs and grasses and plants were edible. One day, the children were playing in the forest. All 14. The mothers were taking a mud bath. The small boars use an apple to play football. After a while, the apple broke. Well, an apple can break, of course, if you use it to play football with. Sharon, the youngest, was sent to find a new apple. She went looking. The rest of them went into the mud. They had become very warm playing football 
and the mud cooled their hot bodies. Little Sharon didn't know in which direction to start looking and ran haphazardly into the woods. Well, no apples to be seen. She stuck her pink snout into the air to smell. <laughs> very vague, very distant, there was a smell of fruit. Perhaps there was an apple tree. And the squeaker walked on. But alas, it was a pear tree. And you can't play football with a pear. A pear isn't round. Again, the poor piglet stuck her soft little snout as high as possible in the air to find apples. Guided by her nose, the pig went deeper and deeper into the woods. There, there was an apple tree. There were also apples on the ground. She ate one, then gently took one in her mouth by the stem. She looked around. But where to? Sharon was lost. Mummy! The piglet was afraid and started to run. The apple flapping between her nose and chin. Mummy! She started to panic and ran. Now in this direction, then in the other, and boom! The sweet Sharon fell into a deep hole. The piglet tried to scramble out, but she couldn't. The walls of the pit were too steep. Sharon couldn't get out. She started squeaking anxiously. In the meantime, her mother, Susie, and the others had finished their mud bath. They climbed on dry land, and only then Susie saw that Sharon, her youngest child, was missing. Fair enough, it is not easy to keep track of 14 children all the time. What happened? Where is Sharon, your little sister? She asked the children. Sharon is looking for an apple so we can continue to play football. Oh no, Susie exclaimed. Maybe Sharon got lost. We know Sharon was not only lost, but also the little pig had fallen into a pit and urgently needed help. I'm going to find her. Will you stay with the children? Susie oinked to her friends. She went, more like ran into the forest. But Susie didn't know where to start. She had no idea where Sharon was. At that moment, the moment Susie ran into the forest in search of little Sharon, something special happened. Boris, Sharon's father, was roaming in the woods. He heard the cries for help by the small piglet. He pricked up his ears, listened carefully to where the squeaking had come from, and hurried in Sharon's direction. The male boar looked over the edge of the pit. Hello, little one. Don't be afraid. We are going to get you out of there. Sharon stopped squeaking and with big eyes looked at the immense boar. Listen, I cannot pull you out of the hole. I am going to shove earth into the pit. The ground will also fall on you. You must shake off the earth. That is the way we will get you out. Sharon had understood and the two went to work. With his legs and powerful nose, the boar shoveled soil into the pit. Sharon kept treading. After an hour of hard work, the hole was pretty much full. Sharon climbed out and gently pressed her little nose against the snout of the big wild boar. How to find mother? Boris smiled 
and said, Don't be scared, I will call. The beast opened his mouth and roared. He roared loudly. He roared so terribly loudly. Susie heard the cry. She recognised the voice. That was the voice of her man. Sharon! She ran in the direction of the roaring. Susie saw two boar. One big one and one little. Mother and daughter hugged. Susie looked tenderly at her husband. Thank you, darling, she said. You have saved the life of our child. Boris grinned. There was a broad smile from his face from ear to ear. He pressed his muzzle gently against Susie's. He said, I will always be there for you when you need me. He looked at Sharon and Susie lovingly. Then the three of them walked back to the sounder.